it's one more time. In example three, we want to find the exact value of each expression if it exists. Letter A, we have the cosine inverse of the sine of pi over three. First thing we need to know is what is the sine of pi over three? So sine of pi over three is our first task. And to figure that out, we're going back to the beginning of chapter four. Using our unit circle, how do we find the sine of pi over three? Well, pi over three lies in the first quadrant. So if we think about the first quadrant, here's pi over three. It would give us a reference angle of 60 degrees. And sine is across from that 60 degree angle, which would be the square root of three over two. So we know the sine of pi over three is the square root of three over two. So now, we want to find the cosine inverse of the square root of three over two. So we've replaced the sine of pi over three with what it's equal to, which is the square root of three over two. And then we've got to figure that out. Using our rules of inverses, our cosine function, Remember, our cosine function cannot be in the third or the fourth quadrant. It goes from zero to pi. If our cosine is positive, that takes away the second quadrant, telling us that we have an angle in the first quadrant. And the cosine of that angle is the square root of three over two. So this length right here is the square root of three over two. And across from square root of three over two would be a 60 degree angle. So that tells us that this top angle is 60, which means our inside angle is 30. And this inside angle is the one that we're using in terms of what our rotation is. And so pi over, or 30 degrees is the same as pi over six, which tells us that the cosine inverse of the square root of three over two is pi over six. And that's our final answer. Let's try one more together. Let's take a look at letter B. So in letter B, we have the sine of the tan inverse of negative one. So we've got to figure out what is the tan inverse of negative one. That's our first task. So tan inverse of negative one. So if we think about our inverse rules, our tangent function cannot be in these two quadrants, the second or the third. Remember, tangent goes from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And if tangent is negative one, remember tangent comes from dividing the sine by the cosine. So it has to have the same sine and the same cosine. Well, if tangent's negative, it takes away the first quadrant tangent's negative in the fourth. And the only thing that's gonna give us the exact same sine and cosine value is an angle of 45 degrees in here. Because remember that gives us negative square root of two over two and positive square root of two over two. And if we divide those together, we'll get negative one. And if we have 45 degrees as that reference angle, in terms of radians, if we're going in this direction, it's gonna be negative pi over four. So the tan inverse of negative one is negative pi over four. Now, we can figure out what is the sine of negative pi over four. And so again, we're going back to the beginning, just evaluating the sine of negative pi over four. Well, negative pi over four is gonna be in our fourth quadrant. And remember, this is a reference angle of 45 degrees. So the sine value is gonna be the y value across from 45 degrees. Since it's in a negative direction, our answer is gonna be negative. And so it's gonna be negative square root of two over two. Basically, in these types of problems, you're doing two things. You're gonna do either first or second. You're just gonna take and evaluate whether it's a sine, a cosine, a tangent. And then you also have to remember your inverse stuff from, from the other day, from day one of 4.6. So then you're using your rules of inverses Again, you're either doing it first or second, but you're basically doing one of each for each problem. Go ahead and do the try this. So pause it now, unpause it when you're ready to check your answer. If you did letter A correctly, you should have got an answer of pi. And if you did letter B correctly, you should have gotten an answer of negative square root of three. If you have questions on either one of these, let me know.